Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we've got a two-gun match of just me, Carl was gone off in his version of Narnia, uh, shooting a Moss 4956. So this was not the world's most complex match, uh, and I didn't do all that well at it, spoiler alert, but uh, let's take a look through. So the first stage here is entirely rifle, and this is, you can't see it because uh, the camera is focused on me here, but there are three targets downrange. You have to hit each of them twice from each of three positions. Uh, with no double taps. And that's a pretty standard two-gun thing. It means that you can get twice as many target acquisitions as if the rules simply said double tap each target. So you have to target one, target two, target three, target one, target two, target three, again. Uh, one of the biggest problems with this thing is in fact the horrifically slow magazine changes. And that's actually really, um, it's made worse by the latches on the side of the magazine, which make them rather difficult to get in and out of pouches. So uh, there's no funnel. They're a little slow to, to get the mags into the gun, but the really slow part, oh, and there goes my hat, the really slow part is getting them out of the pouches. Now here I was, you know, I'm 25 yards closer and I figured I can just do kind of a, a quick uh, rice paddy prone type position. And the problem I ran into is that you can't lean forward into the rifle when you're balancing just on kind of on the balls of your feet like that. And so with a full power rifle like this, it was actually rocking me back on my feet with each shot. And that scope is four power, which is a little high for as close of a range as I'm at and has a very narrow field of view, and I had a very hard time reacquiring a sight picture. And so after just a couple of rounds there I figured, screw it, I'm going prone, that'll actually be faster. Um, and then here at the last position, now you can actually see those targets. I went just standing up, and here, loading my third mag, I discovered I had a problem magazine where the right side feed lips are a little too low, and it wouldn't feed a cartridge. So what I did is I pushed that round forward to get it to feed, I only needed one more round after that, and had I needed a fourth pickup round that would have been a problem, but I didn't there. So um, didn't do so well on that largely because of, uh, well, slow anyway, uh, full power rifle, a couple of reloads, and then having to deal with that malfunction. I took, if I check my notes here, uh, 34th out of 40 on that stage. In fact, the only people I beat were the people who ran out of time and parred out. So not so great. There is, by the way, no no advantage. There's no uh, bonus that you get for firing full power rounds in this in two gun, um, except when there's a special match condition that calls for it. So uh, moving on to the second stage. So on this guy we're going to start at the table up there, and uh, you've got five rounds in a pistol mag, and if you knock down all the plates, which oh, I'm not going to do, uh, then you're done with pistol for good. I left two standing, so what I have to do is come back here, grab my rifle, and there goes the hat again, engage two paper targets, uh, which with the rifle, and uh, I just kind of go nuts on them. You need the best two hits on target, and I think I fire four on each. Um, you'll notice here I'm actually shooting through the iron sights on the rifle instead of the scope because it is close enough that the, the scope's actually, again, hard to find your target through. Iron sights are better take at it, close it, range like it, that. It. I then forget to take the rifle with me like I'm supposed to. The deal here is now I have to go back to the pistol table, uh, reload the pistol, and knock down whatever targets I left up in the first place. This was another stage where I did really rather poorly uh, because, of course, I took had to come back to the pistol there to finish those up, forgot my rifle, it didn't go great. I actually did 33rd on this out of 40, so just slightly better overall. Um, but things will improve from here on out. So let's take a look at the next stage. Uh, this next one is quite simple. We've got this stair step prop and three targets. You have to hit each target once over the top stair, and then once from the second, and once from the bottom stair. So I'm actually using the scope here. Um, this is one of those places where it's kind of a toss-up, whether the scope or the irons are the faster option. Um, I was, I'm actually quite happy with how I, I was able to do on this one. Uh, had one miss there, but otherwise, you know, took 10 shots to hit nine targets, which means one mag, no reload required. You then run up to the table, 
and uh, you have to hit each target once with the pistol. What's it doing so well? My pistol here is a standard old Glock 19. Um, didn't do great on it. So uh, on this one overall, uh, this was actually my best stage competitively. I took 13th out of 40 shooters on that one. So that's not bad. And that's I think largely because uh, everyone had to make those transitions between stairs. No matter how light recoiling your rifle is, that doesn't affect transition time like that. Uh, and I didn't have to reload, which was a nice plus. Those, really, if the 4956 had been given a 20 round magazine, it would have been really nice. I don't know how much of a combat sort of difference it would make, but for people trying to shoot them in like retro style matches today, it sure would have been nice. Now there were there were some field modifications, uh, either welding two magazines together or modifying Chatellerot magazines, which by the way is not trivial. There's more to it than you might think. To You have to actually modify the, ang the feed angle of a Chatellerot magazine. You have to trim off the hold open tab because it's a lot bigger on the Chatellerot and that magazine won't fit into a 4956 magwell otherwise. There's a lot to it. But there were some field modifications done like that. Uh, in Algeria by French troops, but I've never come across any of those magazines. They weren't, and they were never officially done. Anyway, let's get to the very last stage here. This one is, okay, this is a, a back and forth sort of match. So we shoot from two tables, and the first round you have to shoot above the table. The second round you shoot from the table. They don't get to use rifle grenades, I was asking. Uh, and the third, third set you have to shoot under the table. So uh, two rifle targets, two pistol targets. We're going to engage each target twice. Again, no double taps, so one, two, one, two, like that. Pretty happy with that. Then you go over to the other table and do the same thing on two pistol plates with your pistol. Got the kind of cool artsy style view here. Uh, now the second one you have to be touching the table. So actually it's easier, just rest the rifle on the table. One, two, one. Two. Little slower than it would be with a 5.56 rifle, and the triggers on these mosses are not great, but still pretty happy. Resting a pistol on a table is something that actually can give people problems. It gave me trouble for a while until I kind of got used to it. You wouldn't necessarily expect that. Um, all right, so one reload here, which is typically glacial with this thing, and then the last round is with the rifle and you have to be under the table. So it takes a little time to get down there. Um, but easy to make the hits when you're prone at 50 yards in this case. So uh, overall I would say number one, if you're going to shoot matches, especially matches in Arizona, wear long sleeve shirts because shooting on your elbows in gravel sucks. Uh, I did not, I came home with some slightly bloody elbows after that uh, match. It's not the first time I've made that mistake. Hopefully it will be the last time I make that mistake. Um, in a competitive sort of environment like this, I think really the two shortcomings of the Moss 4956 are its trigger, which is not very good. It's not terrible, it's probably better than a stock G3 trigger, um, but it is far vastly outclassed by every commercial trigger like ever, uh, and its magazines. And the problem is the Moss was really, it was the first of all of these modern quote unquote battle rifles to actually be adopted. This was first put out in 1945, so well before the FAL, well before the G3, and 10 round magazines seemed like just fine at that point. You know, that's equivalent to the German G43s, it's two rounds more than the M1 Garand had. Like no one else was doing this, this was kind of the front runner. Now could they have, have made 20 round magazines later in the gun service life once they realized that, yeah, you know, we're kind of undergunned here a little bit? Yeah, they could have. Um, I don't have any specific insight into why they didn't, aside from 10 rounds lets you get nice and low, they had all of the web gear for 10 round magazines. If you've got a bunch of guys supporting each other, the magazine reload time is maybe a bit less important. Um, I guess the upshot is they didn't make any larger magazine stock, so in a match like this that 10 round magazine really is um, a shortcoming. And of course, because it's got that latch on the side, None of the really typical standard mag pouches are going to fit it. Not a problem for the French army, they make all their own web gear specifically for it, but what it means is if you're trying to compete with this rifle you're kind of stuck with the French web gear which is designed with the priority on keeping the magazines contained and safe and clean and not very quickly accessible like you would want in a competition like this. Again, 
that's the better choice, like that's how you should do it for military web gear. You're not trying to speed load magazines all the time, and if you have web gear that's set up for that you're going to have far more problems from dirt getting into the magazines, and maybe even the magazines falling out, uh, than you will gain from being able to cut two seconds off a reload time because of your quick speedy gear. Uh, but for matches like this it kind of is a bummer. So anyway, I do like the 4956. I think as a combat rifle it's pretty darn good. The scope is robust for sure. It could be a it, it could be a better scope. Um, it'd be nice if it had a little bit wider field of view, but it does the job. Um, highly recommend that rubber butt plate that you see on the gun. Uh, that was designed for rifle grenades as well as for scopes. Um, specifically with the scopes it's there to get you a little farther back uh, and extend the length of pulse that you have a, a proper eye relief on the scope, and it really helps at that. So frankly I find just shooting the rifles at all is much nicer with that recoil pad. Not because it's softer, but because it lengthens, it extends the length of pull, which the Moss, frankly all the Moss rifles, the 36 bolt action rifles and the whole 44 through 56 series are nicer with a little bit longer length of pull on them. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed some of the uh, match footage. Thanks for watching.